You may have heard of 433, John Cage's experimental composition which instructs the musician or orchestra to put down their instruments for a total of 4 minutes and 33 seconds and not play a single The audience is suspended in silence, or what we think will be silence. But what we begin to notice is that it is not silent at all. There's a cough in the audience, a buzz from the lights overhead, the hum of distant traffic. Through my work as a composer and sound artist, I've grown accustomed to the idea of making sound. There's a certain kind of magic in being able to create worlds in this way. Thanks to the advancement of electronics and music from the popularization of the synthesizer in the late 1970s and 80s through to today with the boundless options for making music with just a laptop, I can stitch together tapestries of waveforms and musical data to transport us to the bottom of the ocean. A planet far, far away. Take away the tech and we're left with a different kind of magic. Life in cities now Sleep no more My first love in music was songwriting and I'm not the only person who has marvelled at the mysteriousness of this process. It often feels like the words and melodies appear as if from thin air that they're swirling around in a cloud above my head, ready for me to pluck in the right order at the right time. One of the greatest joys is taking this song that didn't exist before, rehearsing it with my band and transforming it into something that we can share with others. Nothing quite compares to the feeling of singing together, of standing up in front of an audience, trying to make a memorable experience. Stretching before me Too far to go I know Making music and sound design was the goal. It still mostly is, but over the last couple of years a new practice has crept into my life. It began with a humble handheld field recorder. Nothing too fancy, something I could simply use to record any sounds that I found interesting. One day, with my new field recorder in hand, I went out to collect the sounds of my neighborhood. I stopped on a street I had walked down countless times before, and I hit record. While I was recording, I had to remain as still and as silent as possible. And while I did this, I noticed more and more about my environment. I documented the changes in the weather. I learned more about the birds that nested near where I live. That's a blackbird. That's a song thrush. And that is a plane. I became increasingly aware of when the flight path moved over my house. Like John Cage's audience, I was tuning into the world around me in a way that I hadn't been before. My focus was turning outwards. It felt almost the complete opposite of songwriting or sound design. 
I wasn't creating, I was absorbing, listening, truly listening. I began to research more about this phenomenon, this expansion of awareness through a focus on sound. I came across American composer Pauline Oliveros, who was a key figure in the development of experimental electronic music in the second half of the 20th century. She developed a practice called deep listening, which involves turning your attention to your sonic environment. The sounds can be natural or man-made, internal or external, near or far, continuous or interrupted. The point is to notice and to make an intentional choice to listen to the world around you. Listening became a key to new worlds. Mentors pointed me towards specialist microphones which allow me to tap into different environments. My hydrophone, a microphone which allows me to record underwater, introduced me to completely alien soundscapes. Insects stridulating in a pond. Air bubbles leaving the tiny holes in the leaves of aquatic plants as they photosynthesize. And this. A tadpole eating its lunch. I felt a whole new connection to these species an understanding of why it's so important to maintain their habitats, a window into the challenges they face. Across Europe, approximately 65% of the population live with noise levels the World Health Organization classifies as hazardous to health. Road traffic and aircraft noise are impacting our levels of sleep and the amount we are stressed, whether we notice it or not. Noise pollution is disrupting the breeding, navigation and communication of species on land and in the ocean. In the past 50 years, the shipping industry alone has contributed a 32-fold increase in the amount of low-frequency noise along shipping routes, affecting the breeding and feeding spaces of marine animals. And meanwhile, as human activity drives species extinction, the natural world grows quieter and quieter. While it can feel really hard to know what to do with this knowledge, I wonder if listening is a first step. If we take a moment to stop what we're doing, what might we notice? What might we learn about the world around us? I invite you, the next time you have a moment to yourself, to focus on the sounds you can hear. You can be anywhere. You can be on the bus, walking in the park, getting ready for bed, why not conduct your own 4 minutes and 33 seconds? By tuning into our sonic environments, both the ones we hear every day and the ones that are perhaps more hidden, I believe we can build empathy with each other and the species that we share this planet with. The art of noticing, whether it's through what we hear, see, smell, touch, taste, connects us to the present moment, its wonders and its challenges. It connects us to each other and to ourselves. Thank you for listening. My name is Alice Boyd.